Something very interesting has happened in the industry of disposable items that use the one-use rechargeable lithium cells. And some people got in touch with me and said they appear to have capacitors in them now, and that doesn't really make much sense. However, what's inside does look like a capacitor. Let me just put this out of the way and open one of these up. So these, as you may have noticed, are the incredibly ecologically unsound uh, vapour inhalation devices. I'm being all cryptic here, I don't want to say the words and upset the tubes. And the construction of this has completely changed. The idea is that, you know, yeah, it creates a vapour. Now, to get these open, uh, you push this uh, mouthpiece backwards and forwards until it gradually works out. Different construction to the previous ones, but what's inside is very neat. Then tap it down like that, the whole lot slides out, and there is the thing that looks like a capacitor. Let's get a close-up on it. Now, a supercapacitor would not be suitable for applications like this because they have a very high rate of self-discharge and also they've not got a good energy density. But this one is marked 13300, which is, I presume that's 13 millimetres diameter. Let's check that. There's a 13 and 300, 30 millimetres long. Is it the full thing? There we go. There's your 30 millimetres long. Um... But the uh, lithium cell has the higher energy density, and it is marked 3-point symbol, which does indicate standard lithium iron, um, and uh, 360 milliamp hour, which seems to be very common for these. They used to be 500 milliamp hour, but they've cut things down. Presumably they've cut them out of liquid down as well. Other interesting things worthy of note. When you wiggle this, it comes out with two gold-plated pins. That's also very wasteful. And it turns out it connects to the, uh, the heater by... Uh, thin gold flashed wires in here that as you push it in it literally just skids along them in the connector. For those who use these things it's worth mentioning it comes apart very easily for refilling. Uh, something that is interesting though, the well I'll take this out completely and look at the circuit board. Uh, the LED that would normally have been at the end is now on the circuit board and it's shining along a little light guide that is literally just stuck onto the side of the uh, cell. But also, they have separated the little sensor here by the look of it. And there's a separate little chip under there, which we'll take a look at in due course. Uh, and I tried experimentally. Oh, that, that does come off. That's good. Uh, I tried experimentally um, putting power onto these pins after working out the polarity to see if the chip still had the recharge functionality, but it doesn't. You can't, that would have been great because you could have made a little adapter that you plugged on that would have recharged it, but they have uh, prevented that. They've also potentially made it quite hard to to reuse these. Hmm. Anyway, I am going to take this out uh, and uh, desold it from the circuit board. We'll look at the circuit board. I shall test the cell and we'll see what results we get. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. My apologies if my voice goes squeaky or cracked at some point because I, I've got a bug at the moment. It's just making making things a bit unpleasant. Let's take a look at the circuit board. On one side, we have a device marked MIC as in microphone. It is not a microphone. It is just basically a pressure sensor. I've opened that and I'll show you what it looks like inside. It has a membrane on top to try and prevent liquid getting in, which does cause huge problems with these. There are the battery connections. Removing the battery in its little capacitor form was very, very scary because there's a huge ground plane on the back of the circuit board and that surrounds the positive connection, which means if you're trying to desolder that and you uh, break through the insulation, the solder resist layer, then it will short the battery out and it makes it very tricky getting out. Also, if you were trying to desolder it and you touched the case of the uh, this pressure sense, the microphone here, it would uh, also short out lots of things to short out onto. It's not easy removing them. Also, they've got a fairly high thermal mass. That makes it tricky. On that side, we've also got two hollow pins that are sort of gold-plated, I think. Yes, they are gold-plated. Um, and they uh, go into the uh, cartridge and they actually connect to just folded over wires. And I'll show you those as well. On the other side, we have the chip. Uh, ASIC, Application Specific Integrated Circuit. 
that is normally mounted inside these. I wonder why they've mounted it externally. It has a decoupling capacitor across the supply rails. Uh, it goes, it's got one connection grounded by the microphone marked pressure switch and then it's got one output going to an led which also goes to the sort of ground reference and then it's got the heater output going to the positive pin of the heater with a negative pin connected to the chassis negative and well everything negative all the time let me show you the schematic i have tested these lithium cells uh, it says they're 360 milliamp power i have done a few charge discharge cycles on them and the capacity I got was roughly at best 280 milliamp hour, and that was energy in uh, versus actual like monitor discharge. So uh, not quite the 360 milliamp hour advertised. In fact, if you look at the other traditional devices made by the same company, they used to have a 500 milliamp hour cell, and that kind of makes me think they've pretty much halved the lifespan of your device, your disposable device. Um, I'll show. Well, no, I'll show you it right now. Just so you know, if you like those devices, they make a rechargeable version with the USB C in the end and little pods that go in much better for the environment. Anyway, moving on. Uh, this cell here, the capacitor disguised cell, a couple of things worth mentioning about it. It has a light guide literally just stuck onto the side to bring the light from the LED up to the end where it just glows through the end of the device in a very haphazard manner, but it works. It shows it's doing stuff. It also is worth mentioning that, uh, unlike capacitors, the large black band in these is marked with a row of positive symbols because it's the positive and not the negative. So here's the application-specific integrated circuit. Let's write in the value of that. I'm going to say, let's say it's actually 260 milliamp hour. Let's be generous about that. Maybe it's higher, not sure. But there's the lithium cell. There's the little decoupling capacitor to provide circuit stability. There's the ASIC, the application-specific integrated circuit, which is marked... V6989 and then underneath SY332728B. I've come across the SY number before. However, I could not find a data sheet on it. However, again, hold on, let me just grab something here. It followed the standard pinout of uh, vape devices that use these things. Um, the inputs to it are just the switch. That switch is representing the diaphragm, which I'll show you in a moment. There are two outputs. There's the output for the LED to make it glow. It's got built-in current limiting. And then there's a high current output to the heater. The heater is interesting. It's formed from a piece of punched mesh that has been expanded, but super, super thin. Look at this. Uh, let me see if I can pick it up. It's very, very hard to pick up. It's tiny. I'll just put it next to it. Oh, it's just falling apart. Not to worry. And uh, they've basically spot welded uh, thicker wires with insulation, gold flashed wires, onto the sides of that and then sort of stretched out so it basically forms a heat element but it's got a large surface area to make the heat element they've got these little pieces to make this a wicking material they've got these pieces of wick that are laminated they're just laid together and they're just basically wrapped around that it's like the heating element has been wrapped around a central core just to form it then these uh bits of fibrous material have been folded round and tucked out the end then the whole lot has been pushed down inside a metal tube like this so it just bunches out a little tail let's see if i can show you that in the actual device is that showing let me uh zoom down actually i shall focus on this and you can see the little uh tail hopefully sticking out the side there just there and that's the bit that the wicking material basically when it's put in it's got some slots in it but it basically pushes over that and that couples the liquid onto it let's go back down onto this area and zoom back out a little bit the way this is terminated there are a couple of fairly big holes just underneath where that's put in to the uh to the base here and the two wires are fed down uh and then there is a goop in here. They've just put a small quantity of uh, goop that's just sealed those in. And then the wires have literally just been pushed into the point they've actually kind of folded around like that. And that's the electrical connection. When you push the circuit board in, these pins... Well, actually, I'm looking at this one and the pins uh, are look like solid. They don't look like hollow. But these pins basically just push up there and make the connection with either end of the heating element. The pressure sensor is very classic it's based on a little cylinder 
And uh, the cylinder has multiple layers of insulators. It's got an insulator at the side, protecting it from the outer metal case. Then it's got a metal core inside, that's this bit here, with its little insulator on there, insulating ring. Um, and across the top of that is a thin, flexible membrane. On the front, packed away by this little tiny insulating washer that's barely visible there, uh, is the front electrode which is sandwiched up against the front of the case and then there's this sort of fibre material put on. When you inhale through the device, all that happens is there's a perforations at the front, there's a little hole for pressure equalisation at the back. It pulls that diaphragm up, the conductive diaphragm, sort of metalised mylar, and it touches the front and that signals back via the switch, just basically, super low current just tells it that that's happening. The ASIC, the application specific integrated circuit, also has timing and stuff built in uh, that will detect if that switch remains closed too long, either indicating that someone's drawn a huge pool of vapour or that um, the switch has got liquid in it or something or failed or water's in ingressed and got the circuit board and it'll time it out and it'll flash the LED but it'll turn the heater off just to protect it against burning up. Um, technically speaking, if you were of that type of person who does such things, Refilling it is as simple as just basically slide out as shown, getting liquid everywhere here, um, popping the end off and injecting liquid down the sides to re-soak this wick. But the tricky bit with this unit is recharging the uh, lithium cell because the easiest way to do that, you've got these tiny little pads on here, might be to repurpose one of these. It's got little holes uh, in it where it sits over this just to... Uh, uh, make space the solder joints you could theoretically put little wire probes through so you literally plug that on and it made a little charging port but having said that as i said earlier or just buy yourself rechargeable and get the pods which you can also refill if you wish if you're so inclined but it's an interesting construction it's the first time i've seen a lithium cell inside a capacitor a case I do kind of want to open one of these up, but they're fully charged at the moment, which is not the time to open one of these up. Um, but I probably will do that. Um, but there we have it. That is the latest version, the V6, I think it is, of that elf type device that you might find lying in the gutter. And it's quite interesting inside. If you're if you're brave enough to try and desolder these, keep in mind they may go up in flames in the process if they short out then uh, it could be a useful little lithium cell. Um, but that is it. Interesting devices, an unusual evolution with what appears to be custom housings for the lithium cells.